there was this asteroid uh, that collided with Earth uh, over uh, Chelyabinsk in the Soviet Union in Russia, sorry, that was visible to everybody in broad daylight. And he had to, like, avert your eyes when it happened. And they felt a shockwave. And the shockwave broke windows and sent nearly a thousand people to the hospital out there. A in space is an asteroid that is hurtling right towards us, and we're unsure if we'll be safe. Neil deGrasse Tyson has issued a warning, saying that the asteroid Apophis is heading right towards Earth. This asteroid is about 1,100 feet wide and is predicted to fly close to Earth in 2029. Will it impact, or will we be safe? That's the question on everyone's minds. So join us as we explore the mystery behind asteroid Apophis and what could happen if it were to impact our planet. Let's just say Neil paints a grim picture of the event. His warning on his podcast, Cosmic Queries, famed astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson delved into a pretty chilling topic, the looming danger of giant asteroids barreling toward Earth. Joined by science author Natalie Starkey, they didn't just talk about asteroids. They explored how these space rocks might have actually seeded life on our planet billions of years ago, but now pose a grave threat to humanity's survival. Every day, Earth is playing dodgeball with asteroids and meteors of all shapes and sizes. NASA says we're treated to a celestial light show as hundreds of space rocks blaze into our atmosphere daily. Even smaller ones, like car-sized asteroids, managed to sneak a hit on our planet at least once a year, causing a bit of a problem locally. But it's the big asteroids, the ones measuring kilometers across, that really keep astrophysicists up at night. Those could spell the end of humanity as we know it. It's a wild twist of fate, according to Neil. He acknowledges that these cosmic wanderers might have brought life to Earth, or at least the material necessary for life to thrive, but now they're the grim reapers potentially ending the life they started. And now we have found the perfect example of a world-ending asteroid. Neil deGrasse Tyson dropped a bombshell during a lecture in San Francisco back in 2008. A hulking asteroid named Apophis, 99942, a whopping 370 meters wide, has been orbiting our planet for ages. This end-bringing asteroid is appropriately named after the ancient Egyptian serpent Apophis, known for personifying chaos and evil. Apophis was on everyone's radar back in December 2004, when early readings suggested it had a slim chance, 3% to be precise, of crashing into Earth on April 13, 2029. Scientists, not just Tyson, raised the alarm bells, warning of potentially catastrophic consequences. Initially, when they crunched the numbers on its orbit, there was a worrying 2.7% chance Apophis could slam into Earth in 2029. Thankfully, deeper dives into old astronomical records by NASA swiftly debunked that theory, but a slim chance for a 2036 impact lingered. Why? Because Apophis might glide through what scientists call a gravitational keyhole a tiny region in space where a planet's gravity gets a bit altered. While the odds of Apophis hitting that keyhole are slim, it's not entirely impossible. The keyhole itself is only 600 miles wide. Since Apophis is set to come closer than some of our orbiting satellites in 2029, it may or may not pass through that keyhole, but if it does, then it's set to strike 13 years later, about 500 miles west of Santa Monica. So, Worst case scenario, let's entertain the worst case scenario here. If Apophis did decide to pay us an unwelcome visit, it would bring chaos. Tyson paints a grim picture. Imagine a collision in the ocean setting off a monstrous tsunami, submerging a large chunk of North America. If it plummets through the center, it'll drill into the Pacific Ocean, plunging three miles down, then explode. The explosion carves out a crater three miles wide, the resulting five kilometers tall wall collapses, cascading back into the ocean, triggering massive tsunami waves, according to Neil, and that's not the end of it. The cycle repeats with each iteration lasting about 50 seconds, turning everything in its path into nothing, houses, factories, everything, all pulverized by a force that could scour the entire west coast of North America clean, 
according to Neil. The world will hold its breath on April 12, 2029, waiting to see if the asteroid makes its way through the keyhole, a critical moment that could prompt several Americans to scout for new homes. If it manages to navigate the keyhole, brace yourselves, April 13, 2036, could spell disaster for Earth. Still not convinced? Let's get a better idea of how bad the impact of this asteroid could be by taking a look at another meteor event that happened in 2013 in Russia, the Chelyabinsk meteor event. Impact of another asteroid over 10 years ago, on February 15, 2013, the people in Chelyabinsk, Russia, got a rude awakening. This was a huge explosion in the sky, filled with a super bright light and a loud bang, followed by windows shattering everywhere. It wasn't a nuclear blast or anything, it was a meteor exploding over the sky. Although it wasn't predicted, the wild event was caught on tape with a plethora of perspectives, almost by luck, as at the time, lots of Russians used dash cams in their cars. Thanks to that, they captured this crazy moment when the meteor lit up the sky as it blew apart. The meteor was about 66 feet across and rushing into our atmosphere at lightning speed. This was a whopping 19 kilometers per s, or 42, 69,919.19 m above the ground. The blast was so powerful that it temporarily eclipsed the sun. The boom generated energy equivalent to 500 kilotons of TNT, which is 30 times more powerful than the Hiroshima atomic bomb. Thankfully, the explosion occurred high in the sky, so most of that force got soaked up by the air itself. If it had blown up lower or hit the ground, then we'd be talking about a whole different kind of day. But still, it wasn't all harmless. The explosion sent a shockwave ripping through the air down to Earth. It wrecked around 7,200 buildings in six cities and hurt about 1,500 people who ended up needing medical attention in clinics and hospitals. Turns out, curiosity caused people to be injured too as they rushed to see what caused that giant flash and bang. When the shockwave finally hit, the windows shattered, sending shards flying at them. The chilling aspect of the Chelyabinsk incident lies in its stealthy approach. It caught everyone off guard. The asteroid remained undetected until it breached Earth's atmosphere, largely due to its trajectory from the direction of the sun, concealed by its blinding radiance. Interestingly, the same day harbored a less alarming yet still noteworthy celestial event. The Planetary Society had scheduled a webinar to discuss asteroid 367943 Denda, a 98T space rock anticipated to make a close pass by Earth. Discovered by a winner of the Planetary Society Shoemaker Grant, which bolsters observatory enhancements, this asteroid symbolized a teachable moment for both society members and the public. Beyond funding asteroid research, the Society's agenda includes raising awareness about the asteroid menace and advocating for government funding to enhance ground and space-based asteroid surveillance, crucial for preempting potential threats. Thanks to advancements in asteroid detection technology, exemplified by projects like the NEO Surveyor spacecraft, our ability to detect and track asteroids like Denda has significantly improved. Armed with such tools, we can anticipate their trajectories early on, enabling proactive measures to mitigate risks and safeguard lives. Hopefully, this means that space rocks like the Chelyabinsk meteor will be detected way before they impact the Earth's atmosphere. Now bear in mind that the Chelyabinsk meteor merely grazed the sky of the Earth. It didn't actually impact the ground as it exploded in the air. Apophis, on the other hand, is predicted to impact the Earth's surface, which could cause catastrophic damage. But those were old predictions and we've made several advancements in asteroid detection technology since then. So let's take a look at the latest and see if Apophis will truly hit Earth or if we'll be safe. Will Apophis hit Earth? Turning to Apophis's impact, initial assessments upon its discovery in 2004 flagged it as a perilous asteroid with Earth-threatening potential. However, subsequent observations refined its orbit, altering the diagnosis. Contrary to previous fears, the likelihood of Apophis traversing a gravitational keyhole, deemed a potential collision hazard, has dwindled significantly, with recent estimates pegging its width at under 600 meters, rendering a collision scenario 
highly improbable. That's right, it was first thought to be 600 meters, according to Neil, but it seems that it's actually 600 meters wide instead. It seems that our initial calculations were quite off the mark. Early data hinted at a concerning possibility, a 3% chance of Apophis striking Earth on April 13, 2029, inciting widespread alarm at the time. Yet reassessment in light of more comprehensive observations has calmed immediate fears, offering a glimpse of relief amidst this uncertainty. This happened first in 2006, when the initial alarm regarding Apophis was somewhat quelled by scientists who projected its trajectory to pass through a narrow gravitational keyhole spanning 600 miles. This adjustment pushed the anticipated impact date to April 13, 2036, alleviating immediate concerns. NASA's subsequent evaluation in 2008 further calmed fears, pegging the likelihood of an Earth impact by Apophis in 2036 at 1 in 45,000, offering a semblance of reassurance. However, in February 2014, fresh calculations by the JPL Century Risk Table introduced a new possibility, a potential impact on April 12, 2068, albeit with diminished odds of 1 in 150,000. Then, a significant breakthrough occurred in March 2021 during a radar observation initiative. By carefully analyzing Apophis's orbit after its distant Earth flyby around March 5, 2021, astronomers achieved unprecedented precision. This thorough examination conclusively dispelled any looming threat of impact in 2068 or beyond. According to David Farnakia from NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies, this milestone was pivotal in refining Apophis's orbital data. With enhanced precision, the uncertainty surrounding its trajectory was drastically reduced, offering a more definitive outlook. As a result, Apophis was effectively removed from the risk list, assuring a trajectory devoid of any imminent danger. The risk list is the Century Impact Risk Table, which monitors celestial bodies that approach Earth so closely that they might impact our planet. This list is important in providing essential insights for risk assessment and mitigation strategies. The current results have removed Apophis from the risk table, indicating a dramatic shift in our view of cosmic threats. The Center for Near-Earth Object Studies, armed with optical telescopes and ground-based radar, is on a mission to map out the orbits of all known near-Earth objects, or NEOs, improving our capacity to predict possible risks. In the long term, this effort works in tandem with NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office to ensure we're ready for any cosmic threats. To predict the orbit of Apophis in 2021, astronomers tapped into the mighty 70-meter radio antenna at the Deep Space Network's Goldstone Deep Space Communications Complex near Barstow, California. Despite Apophis keeping a safe distance of about 10.6 million miles from Earth during its recent flyby, the team managed to pin down its whereabouts with jaw-dropping precision, give or take a mere 150 meters. Marina Brovich, a scientist at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, spearheaded this radar campaign, emphasizing not just the relief of ruling out any collision risks, but also the exciting scientific prospects it unearthed. The Goldstone antenna didn't work alone, it teamed up with the 100-meter Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia for a game-changing experiment. While Goldstone sent signals towards AUS, Green Bank was on the receiving end, amplifying the data through what's known as a bi-static setup. This collaboration doubled the strength of the signals picked up, unlocking new insights into the asteroid's characteristics. But the radar team's work is far from over. They're delving deeper into their data trove hoping to unravel more mysteries about APO's structure. Previous radar scans hinted at a peculiar bid shape akin to a peanut, a common feature among larger near-asteroids. Understanding its rotation rate and spin axes is next on the agenda, crucial for predicting how APO will interact with Earth's gravitational field when it swings by in 2029. This encounter could potentially change its spin state, setting off what astronomers intriguingly term asteroid quakes on Apophis approach. April 13, 2029, prepare for a very close encounter with space as Apo passes by Earth at a small distance of just 20,000 miles. This is even closer than the orbit of geosynchronous satellites as it moves quickly past us 
people watching the sky in the Eastern Hemisphere will be able to see it without needing special equipment. They can observe this unusual event with their own naked eyes and enjoy an up-close look at a solar system object that has become more interesting for science rather than being a threat. So we can relax now because NASA confirms that the APO asteroid will not come close to us in the near future. However, if it changes its path and comes without invitation, they predict it will land in the eastern part of the world and release a huge blast of energy equal to 1,600 megatons. To understand this better, the Katow volcano, which exploded in 1883 and destroyed about 70% of the island and nearby places, only released 200 megatons of energy. So let's take a deeper dive into APO and see the fascination behind this mysterious space. Apophis in depth. On June 19, 2004, astronomers Roy Tucker, David Tholen, and Fabricio Bernardi showed the world AUS from Kitt Peak National Observatory in Tucson, Arizona. It was only seen briefly for two days because of technical problems and poor weather. However, later that year, People at Siding Spring Observatory in Australia got to see it again. Since its grand debut, APO has been under the cosmic surveillance of optical and radar telescopes. Its celestial dance around the sun meticulously charted by vigilant scientists. But NASA isn't content with mere observations. They're dispatching a specialized envoy to study the interloper up close and personal. Fresh from its successful rendezvous with asteroid Bennu in September 2023, OSIRIS-REx, now sporting the moniker OSIRIS Apex, is on a new mission, a meeting with APO. During its celestial drive-by with April 13, 2029, marking the start, OSIRIS Apex's cameras will start snapping away, capturing intimate pictures of APO as the spacecraft tries to catch up. APO will undergo close scrutiny from Earth-based telescopes during its approach. However, immediately after the close encounter, APO will veer too close to the sun in the sky, rendering ground-based optical telescopes ineffective for observation. This means any alterations triggered by the near pass will be best observed by spacecraft. OSIRIS Apex is set to rendezvous with the asteroid on April 13, 2029, and orbit in close proximity for approximately the following 18 months. Alongside investigating changes induced by its Earth flyby, the spacecraft will conduct various examinations akin to those performed by OSIRIS-REx at Bennu. This includes utilizing its suite of instruments, imagers, spectrometers, and a laser altimeter to meticulously map the surface and analyze its chemical composition. Adding to the spectacle, Osiris Apex will replicate one of Osiris Rex's most remarkable feats, swooping within 16 feet of the asteroid surface and activating its thrusters downward. This action will stir up surface rocks and dust, granting scientists insight into the material lying beneath. Unlike with Bennu, however, the spacecraft will not collect a sample from APO. We've had numerous other asteroid scares in the past, too. A close encounter with another asteroid, this was a close call back in 2006. This year, NASA caught wind of a gargantuan space rock hurtling toward Earth, asteroid 2006 QQ23, a behemoth rivaling the Empire State Building in size. This rock had astronomers on edge, but when the big day arrived on August 10, 2019, 2006 QQ23 made a safe pass. Cruising past Earth at a distance of about 7.4 million kilometers, traveling at a brisk 4.67 kilometers per s, it left astronomers breathing a sigh of relief. And thanks to extended observations leading up to the event, astronomers narrowed down its approach zone to a mere 60 kilometers, give or take, adding a touch of certainty to the cosmic dance. Then, earlier in 2019, another asteroid labeled Asteroid 2019 and nicknamed City Killer, made a close approach to Earth, catching scientists by surprise. Every day, NASA reports hundreds of space debris and rocks taking a fiery nosedive into Earth's atmosphere. Some, the smaller ones, burn up on entry, but the bigger ones skip that process and make a direct crash landing on Earth's surface, at least once a year, leaving behind a trail of damage. But don't worry, 
While NASA does not anticipate any asteroid collisions in the foreseeable future, they are keeping a close check on near-Earth objects. In addition, they are working with other space agencies to strengthen our planet's defense. For example, consider the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, which was developed in 2019. Protecting ourselves from asteroids, DART's mission is simple yet crucial. Deflect asteroids that dare to stray too close to our beloved planet. DART's strategy is to smash head-on into potential threats, altering their course in space. Unlike typical space missions where scientists are trying to collect data and uncover cosmic mysteries about the creation of the solar system and where we came from, DART is about planetary defense. By safeguarding Earth from rogue asteroids, Nancy Shabbat, a planetary scientist at Johns Hopkins University, says that they're not here to dwell on the past or ponder the universe's origins. Planetary defense is about the present. It's about keeping the Earth secure. If a deadly asteroid lurks in the cosmic shadows, with Earth as its next target, DART is prepared to give it a strong, fast impact, just enough to send it straying off track and away from our planet. But if you've never bumped into an asteroid before, it's tough to figure out the best approach. Luckily, DART already had a mission like this in the past with the asteroid DEOS. While its target wasn't a threat to Earth, by carefully studying it and then colliding with it, Chabot and the rest of the DART team will gather the data humans will need if they ever need to redirect a genuinely menacing asteroid. This mission stands apart from other asteroid visits, making headlines like NASA's OSIRIS-REx and Japan's Hayabusa 2. These missions aim to tap near asteroids to collect samples for analysis, offering insights into the solar system's early days. Dios was chosen for DART's target based on different factors. It's a binary asteroid, allowing DART to collide with the smaller object of the pair. Scientists gather detailed data about the bodies and their positions from Earth, aiding in targeting the Cassini spacecraft and assessing the collision's impact on the object's trajectory. It's interesting because it's a space mission, but telescopes played a crucial role in its success. The scientists had to pinpoint where this asteroid was to impact it and create the maximum deflection. One might assume that scientists always know where everything is, but specifically, targeting that asteroid requires precise tracking. The spacecraft sped into the asteroid at about 13,500 miles per hour or 6 kilometers second, impacting its surface. Launched in November 2021, this collision occurred in September 2022. Ground telescopes monitored the dance between DEOS's components post-impact, but scientists also had two crucial eyewitnesses. The first was a CubeSat named Licia Cube, short for Light Italian CubeSat for Imaging of Asteroids, slated to accompany DART, proposed by the Italian Space Agency. The second was HERA, a mission from the European Space Agency, scheduled to potentially reach DEOS by 2026. Hera would delve deeper into the binary asteroid, examining it closely and gauging the crater left by DART strike. Nancy Shabbat expressed widespread enthusiasm for the spacecraft's mission to collide with an asteroid as a preemptive measure. However, she cautioned that while the experiment provides invaluable insights, early detection remains paramount in real-world scenarios. Continuous observation and asteroid identification are thus imperative. Effective asteroid deflection hinges on extended warning times. It's a far cry from the last-minute heroics depicted in movies like Armageddon. Instead, preparations require strategic planning, years, even decades in advance. The aim is to gently redirect the asteroid's trajectory well before any potential collision with Earth. Dart embarked on a 10-month journey before deliberately crashing into Dios, a diminutive celestial body measuring just 530 feet in diameter. Dimorphous orbits Dios, a larger asteroid spanning 25,560 feet, forming the Damocles binary system. Notably, neither Dios nor Dimorphous poses any threat of impacting Earth, neither before nor after DART's demonstration of kinetic impact. Following DART's explosive impact, when the asteroid duo neared within 7 million miles of Earth, a global community of astronomers deployed several telescopes throughout the planet and in space to study the DEOS asteroid system. After careful study, 
NASA confirmed that DART's high-speed impact with Dimorphos effectively shifted its orbit around Damocles. This was a milestone moment because it was the first time humans changed the direction and motion of a natural object in space. Pre-impact, Dimorphos completed an orbit around Damocles every 11 hours and 55 minutes. Post-impact, this orbital period was shortened to 11 hours and 23 minutes, a reduction of 32 minutes. This deflection resulted from DART's kinetic impact and the resultant ejecta, the substantial mass of asteroid debris displaced and expelled into space by the collision. The recoil generated by this expulsion amplified DART's force exerted on Dimorphos, akin to how a stream of air expelled from a balloon propels it in the opposite direction. DART's triumph is propelling advancements in theoretical asteroid deflection models, providing deeper insights into the efficacy and timing of kinetic impactor spacecraft deployment for diverting an Earth-bound asteroid. Further investigation is essential to ascertain whether a kinetic impactor would be as effective against a denser object compared to the rubble pile composition of Dimorphos, which yields significant material expulsion upon impact. Ongoing exploration of alternative deflection techniques is imperative to assemble a diversified planetary defense arsenal encompassing a spectrum of response options tailored to counter various asteroid compositions and threat scenarios. Keeping a close eye on asteroids and how to deflect them is very important for us, as we have witnessed firsthand what an asteroid can do to a planet. With the collision of a space rock with Jupiter back in 1994, significant cosmic encounter at the turn of the millennium, a comet captured in Jupiter's orbit, ventured too close, and was torn apart by the planet's gravitational pull, fragmenting into multiple pieces, some measuring up to half a mile in length. The fragments of the comet hurtled toward the planet, creating anticipation among astronomers worldwide. Would the impacts be a spectacle or vanish without a trace? In July 1994, the world witnessed a remarkable event as fragments of comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 collided with Jupiter. Scientists part of NASA's Near Observation Program remarked that it was an incredible encounter. Never had such an impact been seen or studied before. The impacts were nothing short of spectacular. Over six days, some 21 fragments hurtled into Jupiter's atmosphere at speeds around 30.7 m per s, heating the atmosphere to scorching temperatures exceeding 53,000 df. Like ripples from a tossed stone, the impacts generated immense plumes of material, reaching heights of up to 1,900 miles above Jupiter's cloud tops. The aftermath left dark clouds of impact debris scarred across Jupiter's atmosphere, visible for months as they dispersed under Jupiter's winds. But what did these impacts teach us about Jupiter itself? The dark impact debris clouds served as markers for the winds in Jupiter's stratosphere. By tracking their movement over time, scientists gleaned insights into the high-altitude winds of the gas giant. Furthermore, temporary shifts in Jupiter's aurora revealed that its magnetosphere was influenced by particles from the impacts. So, while these impacts can teach us a lot about our solar system, it's a scary sight to see one of our neighbors go through something like this. Who knows when it'll be Earth's turn next? But what do you guys think? Is all this worry over space rocks warranted, or is it just another overblown topic? Let us know below and subscribe for more next time.